In the latest version of Enterprise Architect 15.2, Spark Systems has introduced new mathematical and simulation features that will allow your models to seamlessly integrate and couple with MATLAB, Simulink, Octave, Modelica, and more. A major upgrade to the simulation capabilities of SysML models allows models to use the new OMG SysFIS standard to help define and visualize different components to more easily identify how they fit into the larger model. The addition of support for MATLAB Simulink simulation opens up access to the vast array of pre-built library blocks for use within Enterprise Architect. Enterprise Architect 15.2 also introduces a new JavaScript construct called a solver that allows your models to reference and invoke MATLAB or Octave functions from anywhere in Enterprise Architect that supports JavaScript. Perform complex maths, display graphs and charts, or otherwise make use of the functionality in the external tools to perform complex tasks within your state machine or activity diagram simulations. The SysFIS standard is a SysML extension for physical interaction and signal flow simulation. Enterprise Architect provides full support for the standard, extending your SysML models to include more information about the variables, constants, types, units, inputs and outputs, and flow of information necessary to accurately fully simulate your system. The model can then be simulated in either OpenModelica or Simulink to view results. Here we see a signal processor that utilizes signal flow mechanics to model an electrical signal passing through a variety of filters and amplifiers. You can see the types of the ports as well as the internal variables and constants in the filters directly on the model, making it clear how each part is going to behave. There are new compartments to display the new SysFIS variables and constants. Simply set the stereotype to the SysFIS PHS variable or PHS constant or drop them from the new SysFIS toolbox. The internal block diagram shows the connections between the instances or properties of a block. We see the signal flows from the input of the processor into an amplifier, then is split in two and passed into a high and low pass filter then the two signals are combined in a mixer and sent to the output. This block can then be used as part of a larger model. Another new compartment shows the default initial values of the variables and constants, and these can be updated simply in the docked properties window. The model can be simulated in either OpenModelica or Simulink. Select which application to use, tick the outputs to be plotted, and click Solve. Easily see the impact of different initial conditions by creating datasets. Override the initial values and select the new dataset and rerun the simulation to see the new results. Here we see the result of increasing the initial amplification in the amplifier stage. This next example demonstrates how to model and simulate a physical system using Simulink and the Simscape extension. Here we see a model representing two physical tanks to hold water, connected by a pipe. The water will flow based on the pressure difference between the two tanks. The initial conditions have a higher level of water in tank 1. This can be seen on the model itself in the new initial value compartment. Compare the effect of different initial conditions quickly and easily by using datasets. Test the effect of increasing the pipe diameter. Here you can see the water flows faster through the pipe and the pressures equalize quicker. Compare what happens if one tank is wider than the other. State machines in Enterprise Architect can be used to control the flow of a SysFIS simulation. These state machines can also be exported to Simulink using another extension called StateFlow that adds state machine control to Simulink diagrams. We see in this example a signal flow model of a humidifier system. To simulate user interaction and control the on-off state of the machine, there are a handful of SysML state machines. When we simulate this with Simulink, you can see that the state flow diagrams are created to match what was in Enterprise Architect. Once simulating in Simulink, you are able to debug the state machines and step through them at different speeds while inspecting the variables. These state machines are useful for cases where the equations are non-linear and depend on the state of the system to pick which equations to use. 
In this case, the equations for when the humidifier is on versus when it is off are different and mostly independent, so controlling via a state machine makes sense in this situation. Enterprise Architect includes a few patterns that reference common blocks that exist in both Simulink and Modelica. These common blocks are those that are defined by the SysFIS standard. You can access them via the patterns icon in the SysFIS toolbox. It's also possible to reference other already existing blocks, including custom blocks that you've written yourself, by specifying the name of the library block and its inputs and outputs. Here we can see model blocks that reference a resistor, op-amp, and other electrical components to model an inverting op-amp using components that already exist in Simulink. Another thing you may want to do is have a high-level model inside Enterprise Architect, but the detailed mathematical view of the model kept inside Modelica or Simulink. This is possible too. Enterprise Architect will generate the outline of the model in Simulink for you and allow the details to be filled in later. Conversely, you may already have detailed blocks well defined inside Simulink, in which case you are able to reference those blocks from within EA to incorporate them into the larger model. Here we can see a high level model of the system within Enterprise Architect. The blocks are defined and the IBD shows how the parts are connected together but there are no constraint equations governing the block's behaviour. After running the simulation, you will end up with Simulink files that show the block structure and connections, but have no internal structure. Once the outline structure is generated in Simulink, it won't be generated again each time, so changes made inside Simulink will remain. Another new feature in Enterprise Architect 15.2 is the addition of solvers that can be used in any JavaScript code to call into MATLAB functions directly to assist in complex mathematical equations. You can instantiate a solver class at the start of a script or in the initialization of a state machine or other simulation. The solver can then be used throughout the script or simulation to call MATLAB functions or to get or set variables in the MATLAB workspace. Here we see an example of a plain script invoking a new MATLAB solver and calling a native function. The output of the function is stored in the MATLAB workspace and can be pulled back into JavaScript with a call to the solver to get the variable. As well as running complex maths functions to return the answer to JavaScript and Enterprise Architect, you can also tell MATLAB to run a chart, pop up a custom built dialog, or run custom functions and routines. Any command that can be run from MATLAB's internal command line can be run via the new solver class. Variables can be passed either as simple types such as integers or floating point numbers, or character strings or arrays. They will be automatically converted into the appropriate MATLAB types when set, and converted back to the corresponding JavaScript type when retrieved back from MATLAB. View the MATLAB variables indirectly by pulling them into Enterprise Architect with the get command. All these features can also be used with the open source alternative, Octave. Here we see an example of an activity diagram that uses MATLAB to generate a complex output plot during the different stages of the activity. The solver is created in the first step and can be used in subsequent steps of the activity. When the simulation is run, we see in the output that Enterprise Architect has launched MATLAB in the background and will run through the commands in each action and show the resulting MATLAB generated plot as the final stage. This example shows the solver being used in a state machine that generates an estimate of the amount of power a solar panel can generate throughout the year. The maths for this equation is complex and relies on the latitude and longitude of where the panel is located. You can see that the solver code is used in a few different places throughout the state machine. The initialization is performed as an effect on the first transition. More calculations are performed here on the transition. And if we look at the code for the plot the day state, we see a larger section of JavaScript for setting up a nice plot of the solar panel power during a 24 hour period. While running the state machine simulation, you are not able to directly view the MATLAB internal workspace variables, but any that have been pulled in with the get command are visible in the local variables tab or can be outputted to the log window. Thank you for watching this overview of the new mathematical and simulation features 
available in Enterprise Architect 15.2.